I'm going to teach you how to break ADHD brain freeze. I'm a psychologist, and while I work a lot with mental health, I also work a lot with the ADHD community. And one of the common complaints I hear is this. Dante, when I finally put my phone down and I'm ready to begin working on a project, everything just kind of freezes, everything just stops. Like I'll get there in front of my computer, I'll pull up the project that I need to start working on and I just can't start. This is ADHD brain freeze and it's a symptom of the ADHD mind where you want to begin a project and you just can't start. So let's get straight into understanding ADHD brain freeze and how to solve it. So the first thing we want to understand is that ADHD brain freeze is caused by our executive systems in our brain getting overwhelmed and becoming frozen. You can compare it to like a computer that has way too many programs running and so it just freezes up and stalls. To zoom out a little bit, the executive functions are systems within the brain that are really important for task management and self-inhibition. They play a really big role in planning for the future, staying organized, sequencing an order of events, and they're really crucial for staying on task and avoiding distraction. Now, as I list the roles of the executive functions, do you notice any overlap between the roles of executive functioning and the things that the ADHD brain really struggles with. Yeah, so executive functioning is really, really not one of the strong suits of the ADHD mind. And Dr. Russell Barkley, one of the foremost experts in the entire world on ADHD, conceptualizes ADHD as essentially at its core an executive dysfunction disorder. So let me illustrate with an example because then I think this will become super clear. So say you have a project that you need to work on, like an essay. Now to write an essay, this is not a one-step task. You don't just sit down and write an essay. There's probably a hundred steps involved. You need to plan out what your idea is, you need to find research, you need to synthesize the research and cut the good from the bad, you need to make notes on all of your research, you then need to summarize it, you need to figure out how to plan it all properly, and on and on and on. There's a hundred steps at least if you really break down the finer details. Now neurotypical brains, they will map out internally the steps required to complete this project. They will work out in their minds steps one through to a hundred, they'll put them in order, first step one, then step two, then step three. Then as they begin to work on step one, a neurotypical brain will temporarily forget steps two to 99 so that their brain can free up processing power to just focus on step one. Then when step one is done, it remembers and pulls back from memory step two and just focuses on step two. So in a neurotypical brain, there's a process of mapping out the entire project, then just focusing on one step at a time and temporarily forgetting the steps it doesn't need to focus on. But this process of mentally mapping out all the steps involved in a project and then temporarily forgetting 99 of them and just focusing on one at a time does not work and will not work for an ADHD brain. If an ADHD brain tries to just focus on step one and temporarily forget steps two to 99, those steps aren't going to be temporarily forgotten, they're gone. And the brain is going to be distracted for the next three months until it remembers that, oh shit, the deadline's coming up and I actually have to work on this. So what ADHD brains try to do to compensate for this is to map out all 100 steps involved in the essay, and then instead of temporarily forgetting 99 and focusing on one, an ADHD brain will try to hold all 100 steps in its brain power, in its working memory, simultaneously for the entire duration that it works on this task. And it does this so that it doesn't forget them, so it doesn't get the order of them mixed up, so that it doesn't fall into the pitfall of ADHD of forgetting all of the steps and doing something else. It's a compensatory strategy that ADHD brains develop to keep them out of trouble, but the strategy itself just falls apart because it leads to overwhelm and it leads to the ADHD brain freeze. And then this stops you from even beginning to work on step one. By having all 100 steps in the project open simultaneously, it's like going and opening Google Chrome and opening a hundred different research tabs at once so you don't forget any of them. Like sure, yes, those tabs are there now so you won't forget them in the future. The problem is you can't use any of them because all of your RAM is used up and your computer is about to go boom. So let's summarize and talk solutions. So every single task that exists is comprised of many, many smaller steps. And the executive functioning system that is used to organize, keep track of, and sequentially work through these steps is getting completely fried because of the ADHD brain's attention attempt to keep all 100 steps, all 100 tabs open simultaneously. And because of this, this leads to overwhelm and we call this ADHD brain freeze. And with this understanding of what's happening, it's also obvious why some of the common advice that you might see, like just willpower your way through it, just do it, just get started, or how about you just plan out a nice big reward for yourself at the end, obviously don't work and are pretty fucking unhelpful. Telling your PC that you'll buy it some nice RGB lights to make it look real pretty if it can handle 100 tabs of Chrome isn't gonna make it work better. And promising yourself a nice chocolate chip cookie if you can just get through this essay isn't going to unfry your overwhelmed executive systems. 
So what do we actually do? If your legs are dysfunctional, they're not working, maybe they're paralyzed, maybe they're just not working anywhere near the level that you would want them to be working at. You don't just willpower yourself through life with bung legs. You set up prostheses, things like crutches, things like wheelchair, things like building a ramp instead of forcing yourself to take the stairs. You set up external prostheses to make life more functional and better for you. Similarly, if your executive functioning is just not working at the level you would expect in a neurotypical brain, that is now an internal body part, an internal organ that's making your life harder than it needs to be. So just like we would create an external prosthesis like a crutch for your leg, we create external prosthesis to help with your brain. And this is accomplished by making the internal workings of the mind external by making the mental physical. So when it comes to mapping out steps one to 100 for a basic project, instead of just thinking them through in your brain and then trying to hold them in working memory so you don't forget them and get distracted, what you need is an external information holder so that your information holder isn't just your internal working memory, which is now getting overwhelmed. So create an external flowchart of the steps one to 100 for the project that you're working on. And then this can free up your working memory, which then frees up more processing power, which reduces the chance of overwhelm. You can create an external flowchart on anything you want, an art canvas, a piece of paper, a Word document, whatever it is, you're just mapping out the steps and you're using an external working memory basically instead of the internal working memory. Now instead of your working memory having to constantly remember what the steps are that you're working on, this piece of paper, this Word document, you have it written down, this is now remembering for you. The more specific the steps are that you have already mapped out and held on an external piece of memory holding like a Word document or a writing pad, the less you're relying on on-the-go problem solving. And because you're not having to solve problems and figure out the sequence of events on the fly, you're now freeing up mental processing power to work on the actual project and to be really creative and good with it. Another really good way to reduce load on the executive systems is to use external timers. This is because a part of your executive system is dedicated to keeping track of your time and keeping your tasks on a good time schedule. So again, make the internal workload of your brain external so you free up mental processing power. Every single smartphone in the world has an inbuilt timer, but if not, you can also just go into Google and type in timer five minutes and it will start a five minute timer. This can help keep you on track so you know how long you should be dedicating to each part of a project. And this also frees up your executive systems so they don't have to focus on keeping track of how much time is being spent. They can just focus on creating a really good essay. There's also a part of your executive systems that exists to keep you focused and to deny distractions. So you can free up this working burden by trying to remove as many distractions from your area as possible. So whether that is actually just removing the phone, whether that's installing plugins into your browser so that it blocks certain sites for certain periods of time, whether that's trying to find or create a dedicated workspace that is free of distractions so you don't have as many things pulling you away and draining your executive systems. You want to place as minimal of a load on your executive systems as you possibly can so again, you have as much processing power just to create a really good project, not spending a whole bunch of it just to try to stay with it. Now, an interesting question is, why doesn't the ADHD brain freeze tend to occur when we're doing enjoyable activities? Things like playing a video game or scrolling on a phone. If our executive system is trying to spend a lot of energy to keep us away from distractions, and then that can add to the amount of overwhelm that we're feeling, if you're already playing games or you're scrolling on your phone, you're already doing the distraction. So there's no need to resist further distractions. You're already doing it. There's also no need to develop a steps one to 100 map for pleasurable activities and to keep that map active while you're doing it because it's gonna keep reeling you in over and over. Video games give you constant feedback and constant pleasure hits throughout. Scrolling on Instagram, scrolling on TikTok, you're constantly getting pleasure rewards that keep you focused and attending to it. So there's no need to keep a mental map of, I'm gonna go six more reels and then I'm gonna check my inbox. The sheer high degree of stimulation that comes from your phone is gonna keep you there no matter what. So there's no need to fry the executive systems on your own. So I hope that this video helps you to have a bit better of an understanding of the executive functioning systems, how ADHD brains really struggle in this area and how it's an overloading of these executive functioning systems that leads to ADHD brain freeze. And now that you know that by using things like external lists to free up working memory space, granular step-by-step -step sequences written out to free up the sequencing and prioritizing segments of your executive functioning, external time Time management things like an external timer or a clock to free up your internal timekeeper and reducing the amount of possible distractions to reduce the load on your internal discipline system. By doing all of these things in combination, you can free up your processing power to actually focus on what matters. You can focus on producing something of really high quality instead of just trying to stay alive and attending to the task. 
If you have any questions about ADHD or psychology in general, leave a comment and I'll either get back to you with a comment reply or you may want to subscribe because sometimes I reply with a short video response. In the future, I plan on having a lot more content related to ADHD and the links between ADHD, depression, anxiety, and how that can impact potential treatment for things like anxiety and depression. So if you're interested in that content, consider checking out my channel in the future when it comes out. That is all for today. I hope you either learned something, this was entertaining, or it gave you a bit of a refresher on information that you already know.